In this video, we'll be exploring the concept of first principles formula. Alright? Now, some of the things that we'll be looking at in this video includes how to derive the first principles formula and how to use the first principles formula to differentiate a function. So we want to look at the first principles formula, all right? But before we get into that, let's first get an understanding of differentiation. Now, the derivative, so differentiation is also referred to as derivatives, all right? So the derivative of a function at a particular point is the rate of change of the function at that particular point. So when we talk about differentiation, we're pretty much dealing with rate of change, all right? Hence, the derivative of a function tells us the gradient of the function at a particular point. So when you differentiate a function, then you obtain the gradient of that function. The derivative of a function f of x is usually represented as f prime of x, y prime or dy by dx or m, alright? And you, you would have been used to m from high school, so m represents the gradient. All right, even in the equation of a straight line, y equal mx plus c, where m is the gradient. All right, now if you had watched that power rule video that I've created probably a week ago, then you see me representing the derivative as dy by dx. All right, now for the first principle, we normally use the f prime of x, all right? So this is the first principle, so f prime of x, which is the gradient, again, this represents the gradient, is equal to the limit when h approaches zero, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. All right, and you might be wondering where did they get this thing from, all right? Now let's look at how to derive the first principles formula, all right? Here I've already started off this thing, so I've started off the graph already. Let's say we have a curve, and we draw, we, we plot two points on the curve right here and we join them using a card right there. Now we can obtain the gradient of this line right here, all right? So we can obtain the gradient of this thing. So let's say this point is x, and here we know that out here we'll have a larger number, so this must be x plus some other number, let's call it h. Now the corresponding value on the y-axis, we call it f of x. The corresponding for the x plus h on the y-axis, we call it f of x plus h, all right? Now we can use the formula which is m is equal to y2 minus y1, the difference in y over the difference in x, all right? So remember that thing, the gradient formula, we can use this to, to find the gradient function of this thing, all right? Now remember, again, m is the same thing as f prime of x so i'm going to use f prime of x in this scenario so i'm going to use f prime of x all right now looking at this formula right here we know that our y2 would have been so this would have been our y2 let me leave that and this would have been our y1 this would be our x1 this would be our x2 all right so we're just going to fill in those values so our y2 would have been f of x plus h and we'll minus our y1 which is f of x all right over here we now have x2 which is x plus h minus our x1 which is x Right, and if you look closely, x minus x that would cancel out, so these would cancel out, each. so those would cancel out each other, so we'd be left with the h in the denominator. And we take this formula when the, the limits of h approach zero, all right? So that's where this formula comes from. So 
So that's pretty much where the first principle come from. Now we want to look at how to differentiate a function using the first principles formula, all right? So here we have differentiate using the first principles, f of x is equal to 3x plus 4, all right? So that's the first question. Here we have a second question, differentiate also, f of x equal 3x squared plus 5x minus 2. All right, so we'll start off with the first question, Roman numerals one, all right? So here we have part one, f of x is equal to 3x plus four, all right? Now, let's remember, recall the formula, all right? So the first principle rule states that f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches zero, f of x plus h minus f of x, all over h all right which means here we would have already have our f of x now we need to find what f of x plus h is all right so let's find f of x plus h would be equal to so we'll substitute x plus h in the function right here so wherever we have x, we'll replace that with x plus h. So we'll have three times x plus h in bracket plus four, all right? And we can expand this thing. So this will give us three x plus three h plus four, all right? So all we did was to expand this bracket right here, all right? So now we know that our f of x plus h is equal to three x plus three h plus four, all right? Now we're going to plug in these things in our first principle formula. So f prime of x is equal to the limit when h approaches zero. f of x plus h is equal to this thing that we have here, which is three x plus three h plus four minus, and it's always safe to put f of x in bracket all right so we can do that thing so f of x is equal to 3x plus 4 and we are going to put the entire thing in bracket all right so over h right here all right now we can go about solving this thing so f prime of x is equal to the limit when h approaches zero. Now we have three x plus three h plus four minus, so we're going to expand the bracket, minus three x minus four, all right? All over h. Now, three x minus three x, these things will cancel out each other. Positive four minus four, these things will also cancel out each other. So we'll be left with the limit when h approaches zero, I will be left with three h over h, all right? Now, where do we go from here? Now we have a h in the numerator and a h in the denominator. We can use those things to cancel with each other. So we'll be left with three, all right? And that's our answer. So therefore, the differential of three X plus four is equal to F prime of X is equal to three. All right. And if you had remembered the whole power rule scenario, you could have differentiated this thing using the power rule. If you had done so, you know that the answer would have already been three. All right. So if you're not comfortable using the first principles formula, you can differentiate the functions that you have to treat with using the power rule and then go on and try to differentiate the same function using the first principles formula, all right? By doing that, you would have already known the correct answer and that will help you to be more accurate when using the first principles formula. Now let's look at our second function. f of x is equal to three x squared plus five x minus two, all right? So we are required to differentiate this thing using the first principles formula. All right, so again, we need to find what, all right, since we would have already been comfortable with the formula, we are going to find, we know that we need to find 
f of x plus h to plug into the formula. All right, so wherever I have x, I'm going to replace that with x plus h. So I'm going to end up with x plus h all squared here plus five x plus h here minus two, all right? What can I do with this thing? I can expand this thing some more. So this will give me three in bracket here. I'll have x squared plus two x h plus h squared. All right, so if I expand this thing, I'll end up with x squared plus two x h plus h squared. All right, I can also expand this bracket also. So I'll have five x plus five h minus two right there. Now I'm going to expand this thing some more. So I'll end up with three x squared plus six x h plus three h squared plus five x. So I'm just going to rewrite these things out here. All right. So what I did right here was to expand this thing. So I multiply three by each term in the bracket. So three times x squared, that gives me three x squared. Three times two x h, that gives me six h. 6xh and 3 times h squared that would give me 3h squared all right so what we can do now is to substitute this thing in our formula all right so remember the formula f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 f of x plus h minus f of x all over h all right so what i'm going to do now i'm going to plug in my f of x plus h and my f of x all right so the limit as h approaches zero my f of x plus h would be all of this thing right here so i'll have 3x squared plus 6x h plus 3h squared plus 5x plus 5h minus 2, all right? So all of this is my f of x plus h, all right? This entire thing right here. All right? So all of that is my f of x plus h. Now I need to minus all of this thing from f of x, all right? So remember f of x, the initial function, which is 3x squared plus 5x minus 2. All right, and I'm going to put that in bracket. So 3x squared plus 5x minus 2 in bracket. All right. So what we are going to do now is to put this entire thing over the denominator, which is h. All right. So we are now going to expand this bracket out here. So this thing will be equal to the limit as h approaches 0. And we'll end up with again we're going to we're just going to rewrite all of our f of x plus h so we'll have 3x squared plus 6x h plus 3 h squared plus 5x plus 5 h minus 2 and we can expand this thing now so we'll multiply every term by the negative outside this will give us negative 3x squared minus 5x negative times negative two, that's giving me positive two right there, all right? And now what I'm going to do is to bring all of this thing over my denominator, which is h, all right? Now, if you look closely, we can do some elimination right here, all right? So here we have our three x squared and we have our negative three x squared. So this cancel this. Here we have a 5x and a minus 5x, so positive 5x cancel the negative 5x. Here we have a negative 2 and we have a positive 2, so negative 2 cancel positive 2. So we'll be left with the limits when h approaches 0 is equal to 6xh plus 3h squared plus 5h all over the denominator which is h all right and i know this thing might appears to be very long but it's very easy all right 
So once you continue to practice, then this thing will be like a walk in the park for you. All right. So here we would have the limits of each approach is zero. Now I have a lot of each here, so I can factor with each out of this thing. So if I factor each out of this thing, I'll be left with six X plus three H plus five. All right, all over H. Now we can cancel these H now. So I'm can, I can use this H to cancel this H right here. And I'll be left with the limit. When H approaches zero, which is equal to 6x plus 3h plus 5, all right? Now what I can do now, I can now substitute the value of h. So we are taking the limit when h approaches zero. So I'm going to substitute the zero wherever I have h, I'll substitute zero right there. So I'll be left with 6x plus three, my h is zero plus five, all right? And zero times anything, that thing will simply disappear all right so zero times anything would eliminate that thing so we'll be left with 6x plus 5 and this will be your answer all right so therefore the differential of our original function would be equal to 6x plus 5 all right so it's not so bad so this is pretty much what the first principle rule is all about so if you wish for me to um, differentiate other functions using the first principle rule, you can suggest that in the comment section below. Now, if you have watched this video up to this point and you haven't yet subscribed, please do so and like this video to help me grow this channel.